What's up academic gamers? I'm Mehmet and this is Academic Games Tips, Tricks and Tutorials. Today I'm going to be starting to teach a new game, Basic Onsets. Basic is for 3rd to 4th graders and some 5th graders, so if you're playing adventurous, middle, junior or senior, this video does not apply to you. So an overview of Basic Onsets. In this game, players take turns moving cubes. Players have to write solutions for a goal that is determined at the beginning of a round. The game ends with a challenge that is made by a challenging player against a defending player. In your game box, you should have 18 cubes, consisting of 3 digit cubes which have numbers from 1 to 5 on them, 8 color cubes with the colors green, blue, red, and yellow, 4 operation cubes, and 3 restriction cubes. You should have 16 game cards as well and a game mat, timer, and flub cube. In the tournament, the round lasts 30 minutes and the game is played between two and three players. This is an example of what your game set might contain. The game mat is not included in the picture. So when you begin the game, all players roll the numerical dice. Since there's three of them, there should be enough for you and the other players. The highest roller is the goal setter. The goal setter picks up and rolls all of the cubes. The player to the right of the goal setter is what's called the universe setter. If you play equations before this, the universe setter is something new that is in addition to onsets. The third player has no role. When you're setting the universe, you begin by shuffling the cards. Then you draw it between 6 and 12 cards and lay them out face up so that other players can see them. The number of cards that you draw is your choice, but which cards you draw is randomized. In this example, there are three color blue cards, two reds, four greens, and two yellows. It's the goal setter's job to set the goal. They can use up to three of the numeral cubes that are found when rolled. The goal can be arranged in a straight segment, an L, or an upside down T. Since these are numerals, you can also do operations. If you put a cube side by side with another cube, you add them. If you put an upside down cube, you make it upside down, then it becomes negative. And if you stack cubes up and down, then that's multiplication. So let's look at these examples here. So in the first one, this cube 5 is straight up, so that would equal 5. In this one, these cubes are side by side, 2, 3, and 4, so when you add them, you get 9. In this one, the cubes are stacked on top of each other, so the cubes 3 and 4 are stacked on top, so that would be 3 times 4 equals 12. In this one, they're arranged in an L form. When it's in an L form, you first multiply the cubes on the left side, so it would be 1 times 2, and then add the cube on the right, so you'd add 3, which is 5. If you have negative cubes that are being multiplied, that would still be a ne two negatives equal a positive, so this example would be negative 1 times negative 3 is 3. Over here, you have negative 3 plus positive 3, which is 0, and here you have 4 and then negative 1, so 4 plus negative 1 is 3, so that's a subtraction. Here we have 3 cubes stacked on top of each other, 4 times 2 times 1, and that's 8. In here you have 3, so this is the upside down T. This is actually the same as the L, except that you do the addition on the bottom first, and then multiply afterwards. So here we'd add first, do 3 plus 2, which is 5, and then multiply in the third step, which is 10. Finally, we have three cubes stacked on top of each other. This would be negative three times positive one times negative two. Since there are negative two negatives, they would cancel out. And this would be four times one times two is eight. An important thing to consider, the universe setter sets the universe first. So the goal setter needs to make sure that their goal is, does not exceed the maximum amount of cards. So for example, if there were six cards, you cannot exceed six as your goal. And for any goal, no matter what the universe is, you cannot have a negative number as the goal. That you see no negative numbers here, that's why. So you can't have a negative number as a goal. So you might be wondering, okay, well there's a goal, but what does it mean? The value of the goal is the number of cards that you want in your solution. You achieve this using operations, which I'll explain later. So for example, if the goal is 4, then you would need four cards to equal the goal. And I'm going to explain what this is in just a second. Let's go over the operations now. There are four main distinct ones. The first one is union. 
union, or it's called org, O-R, is represented by this U symbol, U for union. So what it does is it combines two sets, and it takes the addition of these sets. So let's say we had red or green. First, we look at all the red cards. So card two, which you don't actually number them. I'm just, we're just using this numbering system to make it easier to understand. So cards two and four have red. So we look at these cards and say, okay, now we're gonna add them to the green cards. So where are the green cards? Green cards are cards one, two, three, and six. So the cards that have red or green include cards one, which is green, cards two, which is red and green, cards three, which is green, cards four, which is red, not card five, because it doesn't have red or green, and then card six, which is green. So this answer would be five. The next operation is the intersection symbol. This one is represented by a symbol opposite to or, which is this upside down U. So it's also commonly referred to as and, like A-N-D, the letter. So let's take an example, red and green. So we're gonna look at all the cards that have both red and green in them. So I can see that only card two contains both red and green in it. So the answer to this would be one. Notice how red or green is five and red and green is one. They have different operations to get different values. Next up is the minus symbol. So let's say we had set A and we subtracted B from it. The B color, colored cards are taken away from the color the A color cards. So let's say we had red minus green. To begin, we're gonna look at all the cards that have red, which are cards two and four. Now we're gonna take away the green cards from them. So we see that card two has green in it, so we're gonna take that away from the set, so we're left with card four. So we're left numerically with one card left. So that's the answer. Finally, we have the prime symbol. What prime does is it's basically like a reverse symbol. So if we had red prime, we would look at all the cards without red. So cards two and four have red. So red prime, all the cards without red, are cards one, three, five, and six. So the answer to that would be four. A prime symbol is represented by this apostrophe symbolish looking thing. There are also some other cubes as well in onsets. If you recall from the material section, there were three restriction cubes. On those cubes, there are four different types. The first one is this V, which is called universe. It includes all the cards in the set. So if you had six cards in the set, when you refer by universe, it would include all six. Just like if you refer to red, you'd have like two, for example. Universe just includes all six. Null set, which is the upside down V, is just the opposite of this. It includes zero cards in the set. This equal sign is actually a wild symbol. It can be used to represent any of the colors or the universe or the null set. So it can have six possible representations. This sideways U can represent any of the operation symbols, including or, and, prime, or minus. One important note when working with the wild symbols, when they represent a symbol, they have to represent that symbol throughout the entirety of the solution. You can't have one equal sign represent a blue and another one represent like a yellow, for example. The same applies to the sideways uh, U. So, are you feeling overwhelmed already? Well, don't feel that way. Because after we do a couple of examples, you're going to be feeling much better. So for this first one, we're going to be looking at blue prime. So, we want to find the number of cards that is equal to blue prime. So first, we look at all the blue cards, and then we say, okay, which cards don't have blue? So after seeing the cards that have blue, we have to look at the ones that don't have blue, so any cards that don't have blue in it. So we are going to cross off the cards that have blue on them because blue prime means we want the cards without blue. So we're left with three cards, and that's the answer. For our next example, we're going to be looking at yellow minus blue. So for this one, we need to begin by looking at only the yellow cards. Since there's a minus symbol, you only look at the cards that are yellow, and you don't include the rest of the set. So temporarily, only the yellow cards are going to be included in our universe. So out of the cards with yellow, we do not want the cards with blue because there's a minus sign. So there are two cards with yellow, and one of them has blue in it. So we're going to get rid of that card from our universe. 
So we're left with only one card with yellow. The answer is not five, because remember, we're only looking at the cards that have yellow in them, none of the other ones. So the, the answer is one, because there's only one card with yellow left. For our third example, we're going to do red and blue. So we're going to begin by looking at all the cards with red. And then out of these cards, we're going to look and see how many of them have blue in them as well. Well, in this case, none of the red cards have blue in them. So what would the answer be? It's going to be zero, because zero red cards also have blue in them. If we were to look at red or blue, contrary to that, red or blue would actually equal five, because we're looking at the red cards or the blue cards. Card one has red or blue, because it has blue. Card two has red or blue, and that applies all the way up to card five. Card six has neither red or blue, so that would not be included in the answer. So we have five cards with red or blue. Let's do one more example to reinforce our learning. Remember, you can always pause the video and try to do it yourself first. This one is green and universe minus null set. So to begin, we're going to look at all the cards that have green and the universe. Since the universe consists of all six cards, because it's the universe, the cards that, with the universe and green are just the cards with green. So that would be cards one, two, three, and six. So cards four and five would not be a part of our answer. So the next part is to subtract the empty set from the cards that are remaining. Since the empty set consists of zero cards, we'd be subtracting zero from four, which just keeps us at the current answer of four. One clarification I want to make, the empty set Symbol is not the card that has zero colors, because there's a card in Onset that has no colors on it, it's just a blank card. That card is, does not empty set. Empty set just means zero cards out of the ones in your universe. So throughout the game, you're going to be taking turns and moving cubes. So turns move clockwise, and each person has a minute per turn, except for the first player who takes a turn in the game, that player gets two minutes. So you're allowed to take a cube and move it to one of the three sections on the map, forbidden, permitted, or required. Remember, you're trying to create a solution for the goal. There are, in this picture here, there, there would be cards next to this mat, because that's how the setup goes, they're just not pictured. So, on your turn, you can take a cube, and if I put it into forbidden, that cube cannot be used by me or other people when writing a solution. For example, these two wild cards are put in forbidden, they can't be used when writing a solution. However, if there are still other wild cards cubes that are still out in the resources, those can be used. It's just the ones that are in Forbidden that can't be used. In Permitted, if you put a cube in Permitted, it's your choice to either use it or not use it. And if you put a cube in Required, it must be used in your solution. So this red and the yellow, they're in Required, so they have to be used in making a solution. So, you might be asking me, how do you end this game? Well, it's ended with two challenges, now or never. If you call now, you claim that you can write a solution for the goal using all the cubes that are required, all, some, or none of the cubes using permitted, because the cubes in permitted are your choice whether to use or not, and one more cube from resources if needed, and you can't use any of the ones from forbidden. So when you're calling now, you're only allowed to use up to one more cube from the resources. Keep that in mind. And if you call now, you are going to have to write a solution within two minutes to present to the player who last moved, which is the defender. The other challenge is called impossible. When you call impossible, you claim that nobody can write a solution to the goal that satisfies all requirements placed on forbidden or required cubes, no matter how many cubes are used from permitted or the resources. So when I call impossible, I say there is no solution that can be formed, and the player that I called on, who once again is the last mover, is allowed to use all of the cubes from resources. So now you're only allowed to use up to one cube from resources, and in impossible, you're allowed to use as many as you want. That's one difference between now and impossible that's sometimes tricky for new players. Just remember that. There's an also an additional third way the game can end, which is called last cube procedure. That's when you're down to one last cube remaining in resources. I made a video explaining all of that, so please click here to view it. So when you present your solution, 
you have to give your solution to the, to the defender. So if I call him now, the last mover, who is the person who moved the cube last into the mat, is the defender. So I give my solution to them. The third player, if applicable, is called the third party, and they have a choice to either join the challenger or the defender in the case where there's a challenge. So they have that two minutes that I'm allowed to prefer my solution, and they have to make their decision. If they join the challenger in a now solution, they have to prepare a solution as well. So there'd be two solutions going to the defender. So keep in mind when writing your solution, for a solution to be correct, the value of the solution must equal the value of the goal, and all cubes must be used properly. Finally, we're down to scoring. Once the game has ended, you have to write the scores on the game score sheet. So regarding the scoring, if you're correct, you receive six points. There's an exception to this. If you are the third party and you side with the correct party, you only receive four points. So the third party, since they didn't make the challenge, they didn't get to the challenge first, they'd only get four points. If you're incorrect, you receive two points. And at the end of the game, the player with the most points wins. Thank you very much. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe to Academic Games Tips, Tricks, and Tutorials. Turn on notifications to be the first to receive new content from the channel. Stay tuned for more.